So Hamels, he spent his time in Philadelphia and was the World Series MVP when the Phillies won back in 2008. But since coming to the Cubs in the middle of last season, he's actually pitching better. He's winning more games and he has a lower ERA. So how much of an impact would you say, Nick, does Hamels have on the Cubs coming into that rotation. Yeah, well, I think it's huge. I, I, you know, I, I think the moment uh, Cole Hamels was born, he was a big game pitcher, right? I had the chance to face him in the 2009 World Series, and he was lights out, absolutely electric. The man likes it when the lights are on and the stage is on him, right? I think to be able to win in the playoffs, you got to have three guys. And if you're looking at that Cubs rotation, with the guys they have in there, with John Lester, right, with the way uh, you Darvish has been pitching as of late right now, and then you, you bring Cole Hamels in there, I mean, that's, that's a good, mix for the playoffs coming up. Well, I like this roster. I mean, this roster pitchers because all of these guys have been number one starters at one period of time. That's why I like them. The cage, they've been there. They've done that. And uh, that's what's going to lead you into October. A bunch of guys are not un they are not phased, excuse me. Right. But these guys, they're battle tested. That's one thing I like. This offense of theirs, it's going to carry them. But this pitching is going to be right there every day. That's why I said this team is might be better than 2016 at this particular time. One Achilles heel right now, possibility, is to close the roll. They got to get that fixed and then of course. I mean, look at that. Lester, Hamels, Hendricks, Quintana, Darvish, as you said, is pitching better. When you compare them to other rotations right now, you could start in the National League, but just look across the majors. How do they compare to teams that are contending right now, Nick? Well, I mean, I think of like just stuff in general. I think of, you know, the Washington Nationals with Scherzer and Strasburg and Corbin, but I don't think they're, they're going to the playoffs. Right? The I look at the Mets. <laughs> right with DeGrom and Thor and Wheeler but mm -hmm. I don't know if they're going to the playoffs either exactly. so right now with where these guys are also you have to remember these guys like Frank said have been battle tested right Lester 12 plus years in the big leagues Hamels 13 plus years in the big leagues Darvish and Quintana right seven plus years this isn't just another role for these guys this isn't just another season these guys are trying to do something they're trying to do something special and like we had talked about earlier this could be the last year for the Chicago Cubs to be in contention well you look at it most teams got a three-headed monster these guys got a five-headed monster like I said earlier all five of these guys have been number one starters on their team for more than one season. So when you got a roster like that, when you got a rotation like that, you can lean on these guys and say, hey, we need you to carry us for a period of time. When they started slow, who do they lean on? This rotation. They went on a run. Back-to-back -back starts two times around. Yeah. Found himself in a winning streak. Well, so. yeah, when you Darvish okay. really, really kind of picked his game up the last couple starts we were talking about, that really kind of made it into that What's he five doing better? monster. I think he's just throwing strikes. I think that was the thing. There was a lot of talk of whether he was going to be effective in the bullpen, whether we're going to keep him as a starting pitcher. I mean, you can't walk as many people as he has. Now he's throwing that ball, as Dontrell says, with conviction, 96, 97 miles an hour. It's good to see that because when he wasn't feeling good, it was just a little backdoor cutters, right? Backdoor cutters cutters, backdoor cutters, front door cutters. Didn't have a good feel for the fastball. Now he looks like he's trying to throw that baseball through the catcher and ended up with a lot more strikeouts. The guy has plus, plus all pitches, and he was nibbling. Go ahead and yeah. said he was nibbling. Instead of throwing the ball out of the plate and trusting his stuff, he was nibbling too yeah. much. Now, over the last couple starts, I've seen him attacking the strike zone. That's yep. all he has to do because he has all the pitches <laughs> to be a super one. That's and fact. that's why this guy just got to believe in his stuff. He's well, a great pitcher. That's a good sign to have him going because you said this could be the last chance for the Cubbies. A yes. lot of big contracts coming up next year, so it could be a different roster. Yes, it could. Maybe they get a closer at the deadline. The injuries continue for the Yankees, but they're in first place. They have sustained. Guys like Torres are stepping up. Frazier's stepping up. The guys that we didn't expect to see are holding it down, but can they sustain it, <laughs> Frank? Sound like rich, rich team's problems, right? <laughs> so First the world Yankees problems. Just, they, they just keep winning because they have such depth on this team. Uh, these young guys have come up and made this team like a special team overnight because they're playing like superstars. I'm just wondering what they're gonna do with all these guys get back. You can't sit these guys down. I mean, they're carrying a team, they're in first place. What do you do? And it becomes a contract situation, I guess, with all these guys. You, pay the, you play the man who you're paying the most, and it could cause some problems because this team is clicking, playing their A game. And I'm, I'm wondering, what do you do, Cashman, when all these what guys come back? What would you do? Which one would you move? I'm going to go with a hot hand because beating the Boston Red Sox is not an easy task. But when you got a team that's playing this well and they're clicking, I will ease guys back in to see, to check their temperature. Of course. If the temperature is great, they're swinging well. They get the job back. But if they're not playing well, I'm going to put these guys back in because they're carrying, they're carrying the fort right now. Yeah, well, listen, the, the New York Yankees, uh, according to all their players on the IL, have missed 102 more games played on the field than any other team in baseball, and yet That's this team is still in first place. So you know what that shows me? That shows me that the Yankees have one amazing thing. That's depth. 
That's why Frank's talking about maybe moving a few guys, right? Because when it comes back and that trickle down comes into comes into play, Aaron Judge comes back, Troy Tulowitzki comes back, D.D. Gregorius comes back, Aaron Hicks just made himself back. Well, what are you going to do with guys like Clint Frazier, Brett Gardner, guys that have been part of that roster for a little bit? Clint is absolutely mashing baseballs all over the place right now. I just think that right now the New York Yankees aren't that type of team that they need to go out and buy guys anymore. I think Brian Cashman really understands it. Now we can build from within our minor league the Yankees minor league system is absolutely <laughs> tremendous right now. Yes. I keep saying mine, but I still know that with what they're doing right, they don't have to go out and buy guys. They have plenty of guys in the minor leagues that could come and step up, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Well, I know is one guy's gonna come right back and get his job. That's Aaron Judge. Yeah. Of course. Stan's gotta figure out where he's gonna play. He's got a huge salary. You're going to bounce him in a DH hole. He's better off playing the outfield because he's a much athletic guy who needs to be on the field and stay loose to hit his right. home runs. But being a DH for him, at this point, he's a superstar. I would try to move him and see what I can get for pitching because this guy is a great player and he can turn somebody else's franchise around. And right now, the, the Yankees just got too many guys. Too many well, guys. also, too, I think what the New York Yankees have done is they don't care who's in the lineup next man up type mentality. Who's ever in that lineup, they expect to win, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. I don't want to be Debbie Downer, and mm -hmm. I don't want to rain on the Yankees parade. Oh, you but, can't rain on it. You can't rain on that. They are eight and eight only against teams that are 500 or better. Right. They've kind of beat up on right. teams that are under 500. So talk to me. What do you guys say? Talk to me in July. That's what Frank talk says. Talk to me in September. Talk to me on that. Problems right now. Because you never know what these guys are going to do.